What's well, everyone? It's Matt Merzik. This will be an unboxing and review video for Eric Sosa's newest uh, Superman kick, the Kingdom Come Superman. This is the, uh, I don't know if it's a reissue or a redo of his previous uh, Superman Kingdom Come statue. Basically, uh, Eric took the previous sculpt and sized it up according uh, to the correct uh, size for quarter scale. I think that the older one was a little shorter. Um, I actually was looking for one for a while. And then he announced this uh, however many months back, so I got on the list and ordered one. Uh, full disclosure, I have already opened this and looked at it. Um, is it worth what he charged? Uh, let's take a look. <laughs> so here's the box, pretty nondescript, it's got a logo on it. Um, I never, he never really did an, announce the edition size, but um, according to this box, it's an edition of 115, and I got number 62. Um, I know. Um, when he first announced this, he announced the price of eight fifty for the kit without shipping, um, and then he asked about increasing the, the edition size. I can't remember what edition size he suggested increasing it to. I don't think it ever got to that, but he did reduce the price of the kit down to eight hundred. And he just announced today that anyone who purchases this kit will also earn a twenty five dollar credit towards any other um, new if it's new full kits that he releases. So now this is not my first prototype um, studio prototypes. Studios kit. I do have a quarter scale Ryu. I have um, a six scale Sagat, a six scale Ken. I think of one other ones. Um, does this live up to the to the other kits? Uh, my opinion, not really. It's a nice kit, but I'm gonna go over some of my uh, concerns with it. Now, again, I have opened this, so some of the pieces that are supposed to be the very top compartments are actually still on. Other parts of the kit, I forgot to take them off, but um, the packaging is excellent. I like the size of the box, it's not huge. Shipping wasn't too bad. Um, I think it was like 160, 150, somewhere there. I can't remember, even though I just paid shipping the other day. So, all in, if you bought this kit and you had it shipped to the United States, I, I chose DHL because they have three day shipping and it's awesome. And USPS was about the same price in order to taking longer. So all in, you're at about 950, 960 on this kit shipped to the US. Now, that being said, this is a fully licensed kit. This is not a, what they call a custom, meaning that is, this is fully licensed. So Eric Sosa has paid um, DC for the license to produce this kit. One reason for the price. So again, I know there's a lot of uh, concern about where this was made, like the factory. Um, a lot of guys thought that owners was doing all the production when Eric never actually said that, he just said Owners was doing the 3D print, which they did. Um, now, Owners does do fabulous work. There's no doubt about that. But there are a lot of other factories out there that do really nice work. So if you look at any of Alpha 3 stuff, um, super high quality, it's not Ownage. Um, even um, his Zion Art is not Ownage. Now, his stuff is quite is less expensive, but it's good quality stuff. I'm not comparing this to to that because this is kind of on a different level. So you open it up and you're greeted with your sticker for the bottom of the base, which is always nice to have. So here we go. Superman inspired by the art of Alex Ross. Again, I'm not a comic guy or a comic art guy, so I'm not sure who Alex Ross is to be honest. <laughs> it's called about Eric Sosa, licensed by DC Comics. That's what you're paying for right there. You're paying for this and you're paying for this, sculpted by Eric Sosa, and you're paying for that that word right there, license. That's what you're paying for. 62 or 115. Um, it's copyright and all this stuff. So fully licensed piece from by DC to Eric. So again, if you never have bought a kit or not sure how they come packed, this is how they come packed. They usually come in this black foam, all, all these custom cutouts for the pieces and stuff. So like I said, there's actually this, <laughs> there's two pieces that are still on the kit. This being one, this is, um, I believe, I'm not sure that's a chest emblem. No, actually, it's probably one of the waist things. And then this piece, which is actually still on the base. So it comes like this, custom cut foam. And all the little pieces are individually wrapped. So I'm going to pull everything out just real quick and put it to the side. And I like to keep all the little baggies if I can. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just throw them out. And then once I get these, we'll, get, we'll go through the packing. And then we'll go through uh, the sculpt, uh, the, the um, casting quality, and all that fun stuff. But, and to be honest, there's actually a lot of pieces of this, more than I anticipated. 
but I'm going to just go layer by layer. I usually don't show this whole process on camera because it's um, really not very interesting <laughs> to watch stuff get unpacked. But at least you get to see how it's done. Um, and then under this is actually another small layer of foam which supports all that stuff. So I'm going to take that out right there. So it's actually two layers of foam. Put that to the side. And then we're greeted by the cape. Again, nicely wrapped in plastic. Yeah, so when I got this, because a bunch of people had gotten theirs earlier today, and I guess depending on where you are in the world, depends on when you got yours. Guys in the US, you chose DHL will be getting theirs today or tomorrow, um, depending on when you pay for shipping. So yeah, it shipped on Monday and I got it here today. So three days shipping. And then the next compartment down is going to be the limbs and head and stuff. So here's a leg, or one of the part of the leg, one of the feet. These are the two little. Now they give you two of these, and I don't know why because again I'm not a. I know this Superman is like has two versions. It's got based on the emblems, and someone's going to, have to educate me on what the differences are. I'm assuming that these get painted different colors depending on what version you're doing um so that's something i'll have to research because again i know nothing about these characters or their history like i said in my a lot of my videos i just like the sculpts and i like the building and painting process i'll paint i'll build them paint a pile of shit if i think it looks cool <laughs> here's the head sculpt which looks amazing we'll go over that here in a second again i'm just gonna do this really quick because watching unboxing Usually not very exciting, but it can be educational for anyone who's maybe looking at getting a, a kit from someone, not necessarily um, Prototype Z or, or Eric. And then the last layer is going to be the uh, base and the torso parts. So we got the, the hip, the waist, and then the upper torso. If I slow down, I can say that word correctly, torso. And then the base. So, again, that's how it's all packed. I'm gonna pull this out of the way. And then we're gonna start from the base and work our way up. Okay. I'm gonna come down on the camera again. Sorry for shaking, shaking all the work. That's how I roll. No time to cut and edit. Just go with the flow. Shit, everywhere. Really need to, considering how much money I've invested in model kits and paint supplies and shit, I really need to invest in like a proper uh, video recording setup. I would really like to have a two camera setup that I could just leave up all the time, never have to take down, you know, a top down camera and stuff. But, um, I don't know. We'll have to look at that eventually. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna turn table out so I can turn around. Starting with the base, nice and solid. There we go. Looks good. And for the base, I really had no uh, complaints about. It. I think it's really nicely done. Um, like here's one of the parts that was supposed to be in the compartment. This little guy right here. So it's nice. It's simple. I love the design of it. Um, Eric posted a picture of this painted up, I guess a couple days ago, and that was actually a fa factory paint job, which I thought was amazing. Um, but I really like this whole kind of, even though the Superman himself is kind of like a throwback, this is kind of, looks kind of more like uh, reminiscent of the newer Supermans that have come out. So really nice, done, nicely done there. And you get the two, let's lay out some, we can actually lay out parts here while we're doing this. Leg, leg, arm, arm. So you got two emblems, and the S's are slightly different depending on the version that you're going to use or display, I guess I should say. And you got hands. 
And again, we have the two waste pieces, which I'm assuming, again, you would paint different colors based on which kind of, which version you have on display. Upper body. I'm going to just leave the cape to the side here because it's rather large. We've got the two clear crystals here. Okay, so the base is pretty good. Nice. It's solid. It's got some nice weight to it. Um, I love the design of it. Really nicely done. Working up, let's look at the boots. So sculpting wise, this is really, really phenomenally done. I'm getting some weird light of artifacts from the uh, window, so I'm going to come in a little bit. Um, I love the texture he's got going on in here. Um, the casting looks really, really nice. I did a good job of cleaning up the mold line and stuff. So um, no real complaints there. This looks really good. And the same with the other one, obviously. It's like really nice. So, and I'm also going to do the crystals because you kind of, it's easier to put these on first. Um, so these are casted beautifully. Um, clear resin can be tricky. So it looks a little frosted right now. But once you hit that with a clear coat, it will look like glass. Uh, same with this piece. Now mine, the magnet right there is actually still in the base. It never, <laughs> when they took this apart, the magnet got stuck in there. So um, it's not the end of the world, but I'll have to go in there and, and dig it out and uh, glue it back into here. So these go in here, just like that. And these actually um, would be relatively easy to light if you wanted. You could just, um, I've actually, when I first got this, these magnets really aren't that necessary for these parts because they're so light. But if you took the magnets out and drilled some holes in there, you drill a hole there and maybe a hole here and put like two blue, LED, two blue LEDs there and two blue LEDs in there in the base, that would look really slick. And it would, wouldn't be really, would not be that hard to do. Um, the most time consuming part would be um, on, the, on the bottom. Since this is solid, you would have to maybe drill out and make like a, a compartment or something. And then if you have your label on there, that's another thing. But I don't think it'd be too hard to do if you wanted to light it up. Let's put those back in. Uh, let's see. Oh, see, look now both. So I took this piece out, and it took out <laughs> two. It took out the uh, also the magnet did come out, so I can glue that back in. So it, it pulled it out that time. So again, those magnets there are probably not super necessary. I think it goes that way. All right. So let's put the feet in. Nice big peg, <clears throat> nice big pegs for those. I'm gonna put this foot in, and then put the crystal in. I had this one in. Yeah, I'm gonna take this that way a little bit. And his feet point out just a little bit. So the pegs are back. The the pegs are big, but they're fairly loose. I mean, it, there's a lot of wobble in there. So there's my first concern right there. This foot should not have that much play in there. So that's got to be rekeyed to make them stable. All right, let's go with the legs. Again, really nice texture in the legs here. I wish that light from the window was not coming in. Come on, auto focus. There we go. So now here's another concern I have. And this, I'm not sure if this is in the sculpt or if this is me being paranoid. But you see that banding right there? That's not my camera. That's in the sculpt. So I don't know if that's in the sculpt or if that is a printing artifact. Like if that's the print layers from it being printed. I don't know. Um, it's on both legs. So if you're a photographer or if you know anything about photographer, that banding that we look that we see there, we call that a moiré pattern. And it always happens on denim or anything that's got this kind of like stretched, I, I don't know what the term is like, it's not canvas, but this like elastic material is, if you take a photograph, and di it's not so bad these days, but when digital first came out, you'd always get this banding, it's called the moiré pattern. And it, in photography, it's a digital um, a digital artifact. That's kind of like what's, ha what's happening here. There's like a digital artifact in the legs or the print. Um, so when Eric sees this, he can correct me if I'm wrong, if that's part of the sculpt, or if that's from the printing, I'm not sure. Um, so being from Onage, I would expect it's part of the sculpt since Onage does fabulous work. So there are the two legs. I'll come down on the camera here in a minute. And then those peg in here, like that. And here is my next <laughs> concern. Um, these magnets are not very strong. 
I mean, it pulls out very easily. And there's a little, that one doesn't have as much play in it, but this foot's got some, some decent play in it. So basically what I think I need to do, this one seems a little stronger for some reason. Um, this magnet, not so much. It's it's pretty weak. I can pull it out really easily. I feel like I need to dig those out and put new magnets in. So, um, yeah, just a lot of, that's my main concern with this kit. Is there's a lot of play in the parts. Um, nothing is real tight. Um, now, a friend of mine says, uh, got his, and he says the type, his parts fit really tight, so maybe it's, it's just mine. I don't know. All right, moving up. Got the little crotch area. I guess you want to call it that. Um, now, this will need a little work. Um, I'm going to come in again, sorry. I'm going to be real tough on this, guys. I'm going, to, I'm going to be really scrutinizing on this piece because it's expensive for this. This kit's expensive. Again, you're paying for the licensing and stuff, but, um, you know, $950, 1000 bucks all in is it's pricey. There's, like, some sort of a little bit of the mold line here. It didn't get quite cleaned up all the way, and there's, like, something on the surface here. I'm not sure what that is. It looks like glue or something. I'm not sure. Um, but I, lo I like the texture in the sculpt. I love the texture in the, of the fabric. I think you can see that in the camera. Looks pretty good. Okay, and we put, plug that in. And well, I'll come down in a second because right here there's a lot of play and I've got a pretty decent gap right here in the crotch right there. So that's gonna need some work. All right, moving up. So now we have two of these and they're printed exactly the same. I, I mean, I examined these guys for like 10 minutes. Okay, is there anything different? There's nothing different. It's exactly the same part. These go in next and it only fits one way. Technically it does fit the other way, but it really doesn't. So it fits this way. And then we'll just look at the torso. Again, great texture in the fabric. Again, mine's got like some stuff like, it's almost like, this doesn't matter because you'll sit behind the emblem, but this like, if you were, if you ever build models and you like drop a, a bit of glue on something and it fills in a detail, that's what that looks like. Uh, so this is pretty simple, nothing much to it. I'm not seeing that, that like banding or more, what I'm calling a more effect on this piece. It's just really the legs. Okay, now here's my next issue, this piece. Decent gap right there. Back here, even though you're not going to see it, that still needs to be fixed. And there's a lot of play in this. This, I mean, he's wobbly. This is, I would not feel comfortable having this on my shelf without either adding much stronger magnets or gluing them all together. So, so there's that. All right. So that's where we are right now. All right, so I'm going to come back in. In and out, in and out. <laughs> uh, so look at the chest emblem since we're up here. Again, you get two different ones based on whichever version you want to put out there. Again, nice texture in the sculpt of the fabric. This one, the texture seems a little more prominent than this one as far as like in the sculpt. This is a little softer as far as the detail goes. So I'm going to put that one in. And it magnetizes in. And it, that fits really nicely. And it fits pretty, pretty tight against the uh, chest there. Let's move up to the arms. I'm going to go ahead and put the emblem down in the base, same one that, that goes with that. All right, again, arms, same fabric texture as in the legs and the upper body. The sculpt is beautiful. Eric did an amazing job on the sculpt. The folds in the fabric look very natural. Um, the muscles are great, very realistic. You know, of course, isn't, these aren't like super overdone muscle wise but looking really nice. And again, I have, in my opinion, a weak magnet. There's play in there, and I've got a gap. So I've got a, so I've got some rekeying to do on these. And then the same arm is, this arm is the same way. Nice sculpt. I just love the fabric, man. The fabric is awesome. It goes in. And again, I've got some Decent play, and I've got a decent 
one thirty second gap there. That that's that's actually a pretty significant gap in my opinion. Um, so yeah, I gotta deal with that. And I'm trying to see the magnets are flush for the most part. This magnet's this magnet's sticking out just a hair, and that may be where I'm getting that little bit of a gap. Same with this one. So maybe if I take the magnets out and try to reinstall them. Okay, so now what you have to do next is you have to put the cape on before you put the head on. I don't know if I found that, that out earlier. Because um, once the head's on, you can't wrap this part over the shoulders. And this fits, this is actually the one part that fits really, really good. And it snaps in there, just like that. Let's see with that cape on, with all these legs being loosey goosey, like he's not even sitting flat on his feet now. Like he's not sitting, this toe is not sitting flat. You see that? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Nice fit there. Nice fit along the neckline here. Um, you do see the peg a little bit right. Again, I'm being super, super critical on this piece because of the price tag and all the hype about it. You do see the peg there a little bit, so that could probably use a little bit of, put, bit of putty work in there to take care of that so you don't see it. Uh, let's put the, oh, the hand sculpt is beautiful too. Really, really beautiful. Sculpting is top notch, A plus on the sculpt. It's great. Looks awesome. I love those, the veins and everything. Those fit in really, really well. No issues there. Now let's look at the face sculpt, because I absolutely love this face sculpt. And everyone was worried about this little curly cue of hair, so I'm not sure if it had broken off in the sample photo or what, but man, this looks just, I love it. Just so nice. Classic Superman. Love his expression. Beautifully done. Except, it doesn't fit all that great. At least in my opinion, it doesn't. So let's see why it doesn't fit so great. So, on mine, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and I'm, again, I'm being super picky here. This part of the skin sits up above the, the chest here. This should be down lower. Like, the clothing should be over his skin, like on this side. It doesn't do that here. So, um, I either have to shave that down or figure something out. Um... Not sure why that is. Again, this magnet in the bottom is raised a little bit. That could be a problem. It's not going down all the way, but it feels pretty solid. And then in the back, I've got a nice significant gap there, and it heads all the way down. So there you go. So <laughs> sculpting A++. Sculpt looks fantastic. Um, casting quality. I think the casting quality is pretty good. It's it's up there. Um, let me zoom back out. Sorry, a lot of shaky camera work. I love the base. I love the crystals. I think that's actually probably my that and the head sculpt are my favorite parts. Um, you can like I said, you can switch out the emblems. Actually, this one is supposed to go with the one that's in the base. Just like that. Um, now, now that I turn this to the side, you'll see that these emblems will need a little work too. It's sticking out right there. So a little, that's not that big of a deal. A little bit of a heat gun. Basically tape that sucker to the body, hit it with a heat gun or a hair dryer and let it cool and you're good to go. Uh, so that's not that big of a deal. It's thin resin. So I, I never expect thin resin to fit perfectly. That one actually fits pretty good. See how it, that scoops in there? This one fits really good. This one just needs a little more work. So not a complaint, just something that you got to deal with. Um, so that's how those work. Let me come down on the camera so you can get more of an eye level view. Zoom out. Okay. And then we'll get a height uh, measurement on this guy because a lot of guys were asking about the height. Even though Eric did post it earlier, we're going to get a measurement. Uh, so Superman by himself, 
right at 19, just a shade over 19, right at 19 and a half inches from the base to the head. And then if we take a look at this overall height, on my turntable, he's right at, uh, I'm going to say eyeballing it right at 22 and a half. I'm going to take a half inch off of the base, so right about 22 inches tall overall. Great sculpt, great packing, love the base, love the crystals. Um, I guess my main, uh, I shouldn't say gripe, but it is a gripe, is the fit. Um, nice gap here. I mean, he's, he's not solid. If I shake him too, if I shake him enough, he'll fall over. Um, the pegs in the feet, the holes are too big, so there's a lot of play in them. Um, with the magnet and the waist not being strong enough, as soon as I put that cape on, not only did it pull this gap out more, but now his foot doesn't sit flat right here. He should stand like this. Um, so, need some rekeying. I'm at the, I'm not sure rekeying is the right word, but I think a stronger magnet in the legs would, would help that, and stronger magnets in the legs would help. Um, the, the trick is, since this is a kit, and if you're going to send this to a painter to have painted, Ideally, you would be able to ship it to your painter in the in the original shipper, and he would ship it back to you in the original shipper. So, in order to do that, you have, you have to make sure that this thing is solid because nothing's worse than a collector getting this piece put together and then he puts it over and he like he bumps the table or something and it falls apart. You know, after he just got painted, so it's not solid enough. Um, the other solution is to paint it, glue the light, get them on the base. Glue the, the feet to the legs, the legs, to the basically you could be glue them together. Um, you could even glue the arms on. Problem there is you probably won't be able to use the original shipper. He may not fit. Uh, actually, he probably would fit. You have to cut some more foam for him, but you can leave the, the hands separate and the head separate and um, just cut a custom piece of foam for the body. Um, so that's my main issue. I'm going to say it's an issue. It is an issue. On my piece, it's an issue. Um, he's wobbly. He's not solid. I don't feel <laughs> confident that he's going to stay together if this was to get bumped or something. Um, now you have to bump it decently. I mean, I'm 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 looking him pretty hard here, but there's a lot of, especially in this leg, there's a lot of play. He's literally wobbling around, and this foot just wobbling around, and this is just a little bit, and it's not fitting well right here. Um, I mentioned what I thought are print artifacts or layers in the legs. Um, I'm not sure if you can see them there now, but with the light, you can really, that to me is in, I don't know, those look like print layers to me. That's look, this looks very reminiscent of the Walking Dead kit I had, the very first one I did where I had the print layers, and uh, Abdul, not Abdul, I forgot the guy's name, went off on me for mentioning it, but those look like print layers to me. That does not look like that's part of the sculpt. That looks like a moray pattern, which you would find, like I said, in digital photography. Um, earlier, when I first opened the cape, I thought I saw some of that same uh, thing going on here. I thought maybe these were print layers, but they're not. These look like these are part of the sculpt, these little ridges. Um, so, yeah, I would say overall, scoring-wise, like 1 from 10, packing is a 10, sculpt is a 10. Um, casting, the casting is actually really good. I mean, there's... They did a good job on the cleanup and everything. Casting the, a 10. Um, where I have questions are the fit. I'd give the fit maybe an 8. Maybe a 7.5. Um, I've had kits that fit way worse, but I've had other kits that fit way better that were um, less expensive. And again, I'm just I'm mentioning the price because, it, you, again, you are paying for the licensing. So um, I'm just going to keep reiterating that because I know people are going to complain about the price. Paying for licensing, guys. Um, this is not a unlicensed custom. I love the face sculpt. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, I Man, I just I, I think it's a great. I think it's a great piece. Um, is it ready to paint out of the box? By no means at all. Um, is it ready for primer out of the box? By means not at all. Not mine at least. I've got to get this ready for primer. I've probably got a day or two of work just getting it so it fits together and is stable. Um, that's my piece. Now, this being a kit, and these are, you know, these aren't mass produced, so kits may be better than mine. Um, but I would, the way I would fix, like, the gap in the head up here, and I've shown videos of this, I would take the head out, 
slather this whole head with petroleum jelly, fill the cavity with a filler like Bondo or Aves Esculpey, Aves Epoxy, stick that in and mash it in really hard and then clean that edge up and let that cure overnight. So, and then um, when you take it out, it's an absolutely perfect fit. That's what I had to do for the Superman prototype for Vision 2.0. The keys weren't right. I had to rekey everything. It's a slow process. You can really only do one or two keys a night if you're using Aves because it takes 12 to 24 hours for that stuff to cure. Um, same thing with the arms here with this gap. I'm going to see if this, the magnet is causing the issue. Uh, again, what I would do is I would take the arm out, side of this whole arm with petroleum jelly, fill this cavity with some body filler or Aves, stick it on there, smash it in there, and while it's still wet, clean it up and re-sculpt that. The, this, now, this seam liner is supposed to be that's in the, the costume, and re-sculpt that seam line. This arm's not as bad, but it's still there a little bit. Um, the torso uh, is the worst. Um, that is a major point of stability in this piece, and it's just, it's not there. It's, it's really wobbly. Um, so, yeah. So, it is what it is. Um, am I glad I got it? Yes. Um, do I think... I think I'm, I got in trouble last time I did this. I said this <laughs> on a review. Do I think it's what? Is, do I think it's worth what I paid? Probably not. Um, I say that with a grain of salt, basically because again, you're paying for a licensed piece. Uh, you're paying for an Eric Sosa sculpt, which is amazing. Um, my two main gripes are the again the fit and this I'm gonna go, again this moray pattern in the legs. That looks like a print artifact or a digital artifact that's in the file. Um, I get that in digital, like I said, as a photographer, digital photographer, in the early days, that was a notorious problem. And you have to go in and do all sorts of Photoshop work to take care of that. Anytime anyone wore any kind of um, rip, rip cloth or um, denim or anything like that, that's exactly what that looks like. A moiré pattern that you would get in denim in photography. You can see it right there, pretty pretty prominent. So I'd be curious to know if anyone else has the same comments or, um, you know, what, how's your piece look? Again, these are all, these aren't mass produced. So these there could be quite a difference between pieces. Um, I think it's a great piece. I think once it's done being painted, um, I think it'll look awesome. Um, I don't remember what the originals were going for. I know that to try to find the first version of this, you're gonna pay pretty close to what you paid for this guy. Um, probably about a thousand bucks shipped. Is that a better option? I don't know. I'm not, again, I, I, I bought this because I love the sculpt. I love his body posture. I love his facial expression. I love the base. Um, I love all that. But, you know, I like the, I, I always say this, I'm a sucker for a cool cape. But even though the cape is just draped on its back, it looks great. You know, it's classic Superman. Yeah. yeah. Packing 10, sculpt 10, casting, I'll say like a 9. Because again, I'm not sure what this is. Fit, 8, 7.5. And, and this moray pattern, I don't know what the hell to give that. Um, it's like a 5. <laughs> because um, if you try to do any dry brushing technique on that, you are going to get rings and rings and rings and rings. Don't even touch that with a dry brush technique. You will be sorely, sorely sorry. Only airbrush. Um, and you can't get rid of this. In this texture, you would have to sand this leg completely smooth, obliterating all the detail that's sculpted in the fabric and re-texture the leg. I don't, even, I don't even know how to do that, to be honest. Um, maybe do a whole thing of filler primer and then do some sort of texture stamping. I don't know. Give me suggestions, guys, because that's um, that's tricky. So, anyway, there's my pretty brutal, harsh review on the Eric Sosa Kingdom Come Superman. Um, if you like the sculpt and you like um, the piece, I think it's worth having. Um, so, that's all I'm gonna say. I think I think he's cool, but there are issues with it. It's not perfect by any means. So, um, there you go. That's my review. This is uh, Matt Morozik. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you guys next time.